In this lecture, we are going to discuss about Parfian differential equations for uh, two and three variables. So the case for two variables is easy, but the case for three variables is slightly complicated. So a powerful differential equation in two variables uh, will be easy to solve, but for three variables, we have to do some work. So let us first define what is a Parfum differential equation in n variables. So this is the definition. So an equation of the form F1, X1, X2, Xn, DX1 plus so on, Fn, x1, x2, xn, dxn equal to 0, where fi's are continuous functions of xi's. This is called a Parfum differential equation. Okay. So in how many variables? In n variables. Now let us define what is meant by an exact Parfum differential equation. So definition of an exact Parfum differential equation. So if I can find a continuously differentiable function. So if there exists a continuously differentiable function, and I'm calling that continuously differentiable function to be u, which is a function of x1, x2, xn, such that d of u turns out to be that Parfian differential. So d of u is f1 dx1 plus dot dot fn dxn. Then if I can find such a u, then that Parfian differential equation is said to be exact. Then the Parfian differential equation is said to be exact. So what is an example? So let me just write an example here. So suppose I write a Parfum differential equation. So let me write one Parfum differential equation in two variables. So I'm writing it as y dx plus x dy is equal to zero. So what are the two variables? The two variables are x and y. Let me write a Parfum differential equation in three variables. So I'm writing it in x, y and z now. So that let me write it as uh, y, z, dx plus x, z, dy plus x, y, dz equal to zero. Let me write one more Parfum differential equation in two variables. So suppose I write y square dx plus say 2xy dy is equal to zero. So these are the examples of Parfum differential equations in two and three variables. Now are they exact? So are they exact? Let's quickly orally check. Okay. So look at the first one. The first one says that y dx plus x dy. All of us know that this can be written as d of xy. So who is this? So this different Parfum differential equation y dx plus x dy can be written as d of u, where what is u here? u is xy. If I look at the second one, if the second one is y square dx plus 2y, 2xy, 
dy. Okay, this can be written as g of what? This can be written as, if you see clearly, it can be written as d of xy square, right? Because it is y square dx plus 2x, 2y into x dy. So this, the u function that I'm searching here is what? u is xy square. If I look at the third one, the Puffin differential equation in three variables, it is yz dx plus xz dy plus xy dz. Clearly, now you must have guessed the function. So u is, let me write, plus xz dy plus xy dz is equal to zero. So here I can certainly write this is what? This is nothing but d of xy z. So the function u here is what? xy z. So all the above examples that I've given you are exact Parfine differential equations. Now let us move a little bit ahead and let us define what is meant by an integrable Parfine differential equation. Integrable Parfine differential equation. So you must have now realized that not always you can write a Parfine differential equation of this kind. Not always you will be able to write as d of something here okay so if it is not possible then you must do some something to convert it into an exact path in differential equation right so that factor which i will multiply to the path in differential equation so that the entire thing then becomes what then it becomes exact that factor will be termed as integrating factor so i will repeat this path in differential equation need not be exact so what will i do to make it exact i will multiply it by some function mu so that the multiplication combined multiplication with that path in differential equation that will become exact and then i can write it as d of some function u okay so let me write the definition. If there exists a non-zero differentiable function, differentiable function, say I'm calling it mu, which is a function of x1 to xn, such that mu multiplied by the path in differential equation f1 dx plus fn dx n is exact then mu is called as and mu is called integrating factor okay and therefore what will happen and therefore therefore uh, since it is exact therefore there exists a function u such that the new exact path in differential equation. Who is the new exact path in differential equation? It is mu into f1 dx1 plus this new exact path in differential equation can be written as d of that u. Please take care. This is a mu which is an integrating factor and this u is a person which is going to make it exact. Okay, so henceforward I may come up with the stage where I may have to write mu f1 dx1 plus mu fn dxn is equal to how much? Is equal to du, where what is mu? Where mu is integrating factor, okay? And u is a function which makes the Puffin differential equation exact which makes the Puffin differential equation exact okay so i hope the three definitions of Puffin differential equation exact Puffin differential equation and integrable Puffin differential equation is clear when you can find an integrating factor it will become an integrable Puffin differential equation okay so now 
in the coming theorem we will now prove that if you have a parfen differential equation in two variables then that parfen differential equation always has an integrating factor means a two way parfen differential equation in two variables is always an integrable parfen differential equation okay so for two variables life is very easy so I'll just state the theorem now what is the theorem saying a parfen differential equation in two variables always has a an integrating factor okay so let us quickly prove it so proof so let us take a parfen differential equation in two variables so consider a parfen differential equation given by p x y dx plus q x y dy so this is a parfen differential equation in two variables now we don't know whether this parfen differential equation is exact or it is not exact that we don't know okay so we just know that it's a parfen differential equation in two variables still we want to find what we want to find an integrating factor so we have to handle both these cases what will happen if this parfen differential equation is exact what will happen if this parfen differential equation is not exact so let me call this equation to be equation say 1 okay so now before looking at exactness and non exactness i'll quickly say that let q x y be not equal to 0 otherwise if it is 0 then the differential equation will become very trivial so let us say that q is not equal to 0 okay why because i want to divide it so this means that dy by dx from the above equation 1 can be written as minus pxy upon qxy if p is non zero you can do it the same job for dx by dy is equal to minus q upon p same thing okay now this is a differential equation of first order right this is a differential equation of first order and it all this we know that by existence theorem this differential equation always admits a solution so by existence theorem this differential equation admits a solution and let us call that solution f of x y is equal to some constant okay so what is df equal to it will be daba f by daba x dx i'm calculating the differential plus daba f by daba y dy that will be equal to d of c will become zero so this equation i will be needing requiring in the coming stages now let us go back to equation 1 case 1 what is case 1 equation 1 is exact what will happen if, if equation 1 is exact and what is case 2 1 is not exact okay so let me jump to case 1 now so case 1 if equation 1 what is equation 1 equation 1 is p dx plus q dy is, is equal to 0 is exact what does it mean if it is exact means therefore by definition there exists a function u it is a function of xy such that p dx plus q dy can be written as d of u correct p dx plus q dy can be written as d of u this equivalently means that mu into 
the Buffin differential equation. So mu comes from this. Anyways, it's one, so doesn't matter. So mu into the Buffin differential equation, left hand side is equal to d mu, so mu becomes one, and therefore the Buffin differential equation is exact. Is uh, sorry has an integrating factor. Has an integrating factor. Remember what we wanted to prove? We wanted to prove that it always has an integrating factor. Now let us look if what will happen if the given Puffin differential equation is not exact. So case two, if P dx plus Q dy equal to zero is not exact then what will i do then how will i find the integrating factor okay so my target here now will be how to find integrating factor because our theorem claims that you can always find the integrating factor okay now if i compare equation one and two what will happen if I compare equation one and two? What is equation one? Equation one was p dx plus q dy equal to zero and f by dx dx plus do f by do y dy. Okay, so I'm comparing them both are zero. So if I can look at the coefficients of these and the coefficients need not be equal, but they are in proportion so this means that the coefficients are in proportion right so i can certainly say that dabba f by dabba x d upon p must be equal to do f by do y upon q and this is some function which again depends on x comma y okay because they're they are because they're proportion the proportions must be equal the ratios must be equal and that is some function that function will come out to be some function mu now i will claim that this mu that i have obtained here this mu itself is what this mu itself is the integrating factor let us see how because of this what will happen is dabba f by dabba x is equal to mu p and dabba f by dabba y will be equal to how much mu times q correct and therefore i will consider what let me consider say lhs let me write with lhs i will consider what is mu into the uh, left side and side of the Puffin differential equation p dx plus q dy which is equal to mu p dx plus mu q dy which is equal to what is mu p dx mu p dx is dabba f by dabba x dx plus this is dabba f by dabba y dy and what is this equal to this is nothing but d of f and what have you proved eventually which is the rhs and we have therefore proved saying lhs equal to rhs we get that mu p dx plus q dy is equal to what d of f and this means that this mu is the integrating factor of the Puffin differential equation. What was that Puffin differential equation? P dx plus Q dy equal to zero. And therefore, we have, though the equation, though it was not exact, we have found out the integrating factor, and that integrating factor is mu. So, what we have proved in this theorem is that any Puffin differential equations in two variables, which is of the form p dx plus q dy equal to zero, okay, it may be it may be exact or it may not be exact, but it is always an integrable Puffin differential equation. So this is what we have proved in this. 
theorem. Okay, so moving ahead, now we prove uh, the next important theorem. So before proving that important theorem, let me just state one result here. So let u x y and v x y be functions of x and y such that the partial derivative of v with respect to y is not equal to zero. So if the Jacobian uv with respect to xy is equal to zero, then there exists a relation between u and v that is we can find a function of u and v such that f of uv is equal to zero and this result holds holds conversely true so the converse is also true means if f of uv is equal to zero then the jacobian of uv with respect to xy will be equal to how much the jacobian will be equal to zero so this uh, the proof of this result we will be proving in some other video let us move on to the next important lemma that we are going to need so let me write a lemma so if uh, x bar is given by pqr where pq and r are functions of x such that x bar dot curl of x bar is equal to zero and uh, mu is some arbitrary function of x y and z then mu x bar into and dot curl of mu x bar that is also equal to how much zero so what is this result saying us that if x bar and dot curl x bar is zero then mu x bar dot curl of mu x bar is also equal to zero and the converse is also true the converse holds so we are going to prove this lemma now so let me write the proof of the lemma so we know that x bar is given to be what p q and r so this means i can write x bar is equal to p i plus q j plus r k right now let us calculate what is curl x bar what is curl of x bar curl x bar is determinant i j k into dx dy dz and pqr over here so this will give me how much this will give me ry minus qz i plus i'm writing a plus sign here the j component will be pz minus rx okay plus the k component is given by what qx minus py okay so this is curl x bar so what is x bar dot curl x bar now what is x bar dot curl x bar where we know that x bar is pi plus qj plus rk dot this vector curl x bar is here okay so let me write it curl x bar so when i take the dot product what will i get the p will multiply this so i will get p r y minus p q z plus q times p z minus r x plus r times q x minus p y okay so you now observe that this if i want to if, if i look at the the symbols p q and r they are in a cyclic way and the three variables x y and z 
they are also in cyclic way so i can write this as what i can uh, write this as summation of what i can write this as summation p r y look at this term okay p r y minus q z where here the variables p q and r will revolve al along the cycle and the variables x y z will also change the roles according to this cycle so i hope you understand that this summation is nothing but the three terms right so i'll show you one simple example okay so what is the first we'll keep p q r as it is so this means p into r y minus q z is as it is plus what is the next term replace the p by what q replace the r by p replace this y the y variable will be replaced by what z minus q variable will be replaced by what r because q is replaced by r here z variable is going to get replaced by what replaced by x and so on so we'll get the third term also so this is the meaning of this summation okay so this is a so this means pqr and xyz are cyclic in nature so this entire term can now be written in brief as this summation okay so this is the first thing that we will be needing uh, we are going to need this okay now let us start with the actual proof so this was a little bit of preparation for the proof so now let us assume that assume that x bar dot curl x bar is equal to how much zero and what am i supposed to prove i'm supposed to show what supposed to show that mu x bar dot curl of mu x bar this is going to be how much zero okay so let us start with the lhs what is the lhs given by the lhs is mu x bar dot curl of mu x bar okay i have to simplify this and show that it is equal to zero remember this is given to us now what is x bar mu x bar dot curl of mu x bar now this is nothing but summation of what is mu x bar mu x bar means mu p i plus mu q j plus mu r k right and that will be multiplying multiplied by what curl of mu x bar now what is curl of mu x bar we have just now written what is the curl of x bar written as see it is this right so this is x dot curl x bar mu x dot curl so when i have, have a mu there what will i write here wherever there is a p i will write a mu p wherever there is r i will write a mu r wherever there is a q i will write a mu q so this will mean what this will mean that it is mu p look at this expression okay i'm changing here mu p into bracket mu r y minus mu q z what is what are the symbols that i'm going to change p q r are going to change and x y z are going to change in cyclic order now remember mu is a function of what x y z don't forget it's equal to summation mu p then i'm going to write this now this is what this is mu r y plus mu y r minus mu q z plus mu z q where the summation where is having notations the p q and r are changing x y z are also changing now i'm not going to write this again and again which is equal to summation mu p and to collect the terms here now which is mu r y minus mu q z plus mu y r minus mu z q okay which is equal to separate out the summations this mu p is going to multiply this term so i'm going to get a mu square p r mu square into p 
into R y minus Q z plus this mu p will also multiply the second term so it is mu right into mu y so let me write a p r mu y okay p r mu y minus q p mu z okay. if i separate out the summation both of them now here mu squared has nothing to do with the summation so it will come outside which is equal to summation over p p q r x y z which is p r y minus p q z let me write p r y minus q z let me take keep it as it is plus this mu will also come out of the summation mu summation over p q r x y z okay which is p r mu y minus q p mu z what is this quantity mu squared what is this quantity this quantity is exactly equal to what just we have just calculated it above this quantity is exactly x bar dot curl of x bar right you can see go back and see that expression and what is this this is mu into if i expand this exclamation now so you know what we are supposed to do p will be replaced by q q will be replaced by r and r will be replaced by p x will be replaced by y y will be replaced by z and z will be replaced by x okay we have to do this for every variable you shall get three terms in the summation so what will happen when i expand the summation i will get p r mu y minus q p mu z this first the symbols are as it is next two symbols now let us change the variables so this will become p gets replaced by q r gets replaced by p mu y gets replaced by mu z because y gets replaced by z minus q gets replaced by r p gets replaced by q mu z gets replaced by x plus again change of variable q gets replaced by r p gets replaced by q mu z z gets replaced by x minus r gets replaced by p q gets replaced by r and mu x gets replaced by y and you see that these terms are actually cancelling each other p r mu y is cancelling p r mu y q p mu z is cancelling with q p mu z and r q mu x is cancelling with r q mu x so all the terms in the second summation cancel out what is x bar dot curl x bar x star dot curl x bar is given to be zero so this will be mu square into zero because this is our hypothesis right plus mu into zero because all the terms have cancelled out here so this finally has given up what this finally has given us zero everything so we have proved that what have we proved we have proved that mu x bar dot curl mu x bar is equal to zero given that what was given to us given that x bar dot curl x bar is equal to zero so whenever x bar dot curl x bar is zero we can directly say that mu x bar dot curl x curl mu x bar will also be equal to zero okay now how do we prove the converse of this particular theorem how what is the converse now observe at this particular step this particular step will help you giving the answer now this calculation that i have written here okay who is this calculation what is this calculation equal to this calculation is nothing but mu x bar dot curl of mu x bar right this is itself the calculation see left hand side was what left hand side was mu x bar dot curl of mu x bar so mu x bar dot curl x mu x bar can be written as this format this itself will give you your answer right see let me write it since mu x bar dot curl 
mu x bar is equal to mu square into x bar dot curl x bar plus summation summation of what summation is here summation of p r mu y minus q p mu z correct and we know that this is always equal to zero because all the sums cancel each other as we have seen here okay so this is always equal to zero therefore this will always go out of the picture right therefore if this is zero so if mu x bar dot curl mu x bar is equal to zero then this will be in that zero is equal to mu square into x bar dot curl mu curl of x bar and mu is a non-zero quantity because if mu is zero, zero then nothing no, nothing is remaining to prove so mu is non-zero we will assume that mu is always a non-zero quantity otherwise this will make no sense so this will mean that x bar dot curl of x bar has to be equal to what has to be equal to zero so this finishes our lemma now we come to the most important theorem in this particular section so what is the section the theorem a necessary and sufficient condition for a parfian differential equation p dx sorry p dx plus q dy plus r dz equal to zero is integrable is integrable is that x bar dot or x bar is equal to zero where x bar is p q and r okay so this theorem is very important in this section it says that when is a path in differential equation in three variables integrable when will you be able to find the integrating factor the condition is that you will be able to find the integrating factor if x bar dot curl x bar turns out to be zero okay so to prove this theorem we are going to use the above mentioned two theorem lemma whatever we have mentioned just before okay so let us prove it now so let me say the necessary part now what will will what we will be assuming we will assume that suppose the parfin differential equation is integrable so suppose the parfin differential equation p dx plus q dy plus r dz is equal to is zero is integrable remember what we want to prove we want to prove that x bar dot curl curl of x bar is equal to zero now since it is integrable this means there certainly exists a non zero mu correct such that when i multiply that mu to that path in differential equation p dx plus q dy plus r dz it will become exact correct so this will become an exact differential equation and therefore there exists a u such that let me write it here and there exists a u which is a function of x y z such that d of u will be equal to mu into this because why because once i multiplied by mu it has become exact and therefore you can find the u which is such that du will become equal to this okay right this mu is remember this mu is non-zero what is this u called 
this u is called integrand this is called the integral of the parfian differential equation okay now what is du equal to but do you know that if i write du i'll get it is dava u by dava x dx plus dava u by dava y dy plus dava u by dava z dz remember there are two variables here u and mu do not get confused between u and mu therefore when i compare these two people what can i say therefore this means that dava u by dava x is equal to how much mu p dava u by dava y will be equal to mu q and dava u by dava z is equal to mu r correct and therefore when i write the vector mu x bar how will the vector mu x bar look like mu x bar is mu p mu q and mu z because x bar is p q r which is nothing but equal to what which is equal to but i know that mu p is now equal to what dab u by dab x what is mu q dab u by dab y what is mu r dab u by dab z right what is dab u by dab x dab u by dab y and dab u by dab what is this vector called this vector is called the gradient of u correct so we have proved that mu into x bar turns out to be gradient of u this is mu i'm repeating and this is u but we know that curl of a gradient of any scalar function is equal to 0 this is always true right therefore which scalar function have i taken here the scalar function that i have taken here is u this means that curl of what is gradient of u equal to what gradient of u is equal to mu x bar is equal to 0 correct this means that mu has this means that curl of what mu x bar is equal to how much zero therefore when i take a, the dot product of this with any quantity so therefore mu x bar multiplied by zero bar zero okay which is uh, this is a bar i'm sorry okay right it will also be equal to how much it will also be equal to zero this is a scalar zero therefore this means that mu x bar dot zero bar is what curl of mu x bar is equal to zero this is a scalar zero and this means that mu x bar dot curl mu x bar is zero and therefore by the above theorem we can say that x bar dot curl x bar also has to be equal to zero because the converse of that theorem was also true correct so this also has to be zero this is what we wanted to prove correct in the necessary part we wanted to prove that x bar dot curl x bar is also zero let us go for the sufficient part the sufficient part assume that x bar dot curl x bar is equal to 0 what am i supposed to show i am supposed to show that the parfian differential equation is integrable means i want to find what i want to find an integrating factor somewhere okay so let us see how to do this now look at the parfian differential equation the parfian differential equation is nothing but p dx plus q dy 
प्लस आर डी जेड इक्वल टू जीरो नाउ लेट एस मेक आवर लाइफ लिटिल बिट सिंपल कैन आई मेक कैन आई रिड्यूस दिस पाफ इन डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन ऑफ थ्री वेरिएबल्स इन टू टू वेरिएबल्स बिकॉज वी नो समथिंग अबाउट पाफ इन डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन ऑफ टू वेरिएबल्स दैट आर पाफ इन डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन ऑफ टू वेरिएबल्स इज ऑलवेज वॉट ऑलवेज एन इंटीग्रेबल पाफ इन डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन दैट इज द फर्स्ट थेरम ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर राइट ऑफ दिस सेक्शन आई विल से so what we will do is we will assume for our simplicity is that z is say some constant you can take any variable to be constant you can take x constant y constant no issue so suppose z is constant in that case what will happen this will mean that dz is equal to 0 assuming something some variable is constant and solving a problem whenever we we come across problems that method is has a different name it is called as natani's method okay we will be doing this method in the future lectures okay so well let us focus on the theorem now therefore we what happens this path in differential equation becomes p dx plus q dy is equal to what will become equal to zero now this is a path in differential equation in two variables and therefore we know that by about theorems this path in differential equation is there it is always integrable right we have proved this theorem above and therefore it has an integral and hence has an integral that integral i am going to call as u which is a function of x y z and this is a constant okay you this will become be the integral of this parfian differential equation now this constant is not a constant which we always think of this constant will be a constant which depends on z also this constant depends on z why because we have we are assuming that z is some constant let me not confuse you let me write a c1 here for constant so this constant is of constant which can have z also because z also we have we are treating as what constant okay and since it is integrable since this is integrable there exists a non zero function mu such that what such that p dx plus q dy when i multiply by that integrating factor this will become what this d of u okay this is the u this u is called what this u is called integral this u is called integral and this mu is called what integrating factor i'm repeating again u is called integral and mu is called integrating factor okay therefore i will get mu p dx plus mu q dy is equal to daba u by daba x dx plus daba u by daba y dy okay and therefore when i compare i will get simply mu p will be equal to how much daba u by daba x and mu q will be equal to how much daba u by daba y okay and therefore uh, let me write since since p dx what is the original path in differential equation since the original path in differential equation is p dx plus q dy plus r dz is equal to 0 i will multiply it by mu it will become mu into p dx plus q dy plus r dz now don't take a dz so don't take dz equal to 0 here I'm, this is the original path in differential equation okay Is equal to zero, and this will mean that mu p dx 
plus mu q dy plus mu r dz is equal to 0 this mu p is nothing but w by w x this mu q is dab w by w y so w by w x dx plus w by w y dy plus mu r dz is equal to 0 you see that this is looking incomplete w by w x dx plus w by w y dy plus what should be there w by w z also should be there by u by w y dy plus w by w z dz plus mu r minus w by w z dz so i have added and subtracted what w by w z dz okay and therefore this person the first three brackets will become what they will become d of u plus this will become mu r minus w by w z dz is equal to how much zero this quantity i will be calling as capital k so du plus k daba k dz will be equal to zero what is k here where k is nothing but mu r minus w by w z okay so we have reached up to this equation now what is given to us so let me call this equation say let me call this equation star okay we will come back to this equation right so what is given to us given that x bar dot curl x bar is equal to how much is equal to zero therefore by above theorem therefore by above theorem what can i say i know that if x bar dot curl x bar is equal to zero and mu is some non-zero function then mu x bar dot curl mu x bar that also is equal to zero right so what is this quantity let us calculate what is this quantity what is what if i simplify this term now what is mu x bar what is it's equal to mu p mu q and mu r which is equal to what was mu p mu p was daba u by daba x what is mu q daba u by daba y what is mu r mu r came up to be how much mu r came up to be look at this expression get this expression mu r is how much k plus w by w z correct which is equal to w by w x comma w by w y by u by w z plus the vector 0 0 k right which is nothing but gradient of u plus the vector 0 0 k what is this expression for this is the expression for mu x bar but we we wanted to like look at which expression we wanted to look at this expression right since mu x bar dot curl mu x bar is equal to 0 this implies what is mu x bar i have just now calculated it mu x bar is how much mu x bar is del u grad u plus 0 0 k okay? dot curl of mu x bar curl of mu x bar what is curl of mu x bar again mu x bar i know what is mu x bar mu x bar is grad of 
u plus 0 0 k and this is equal to how much this is equal to 0 right now I will not touch this quantity for some time this implies grad of u plus 0 0 k dot del cross grad u plus the vector 0 0 k which is grad u plus 0 0 k dot this is curl of this plus curl of this curl of grad u plus curl of the vector 0 0 k is equal to 0 this is also equal to 0 okay but I know that curl of gradient of anything is always equal to 0 right so this will be as it is this one plus grad u plus 0 0 k dot curl of 0 0 k okay now what is curl of 0 0 k this is equal to let me just do here a rough work what is curl of the vector 0 0 k the curl of the vector 0 0 k is determinant i j k into dx dy dz 0 0 and k okay so we obviously see here that when i have i into something what will be what will you get i into k y minus 0 minus j into kx minus 0 and k component will be 0 so it is i k y minus j k x so this quantity is actually nothing but what this is which vector this is the vector k y minus k x and 0 right so this is the vector k y minus kx and a 0 right so I will erase this rough work now and what is the first quantity what is the first quantity in the bracket what is this this is nothing but there is a dot product here and this is equal to 0 don't forget this equal to 0 what is this equal to this is dabba u by dabba x comma dabba u by dabba y comma dabba u by dabba z plus k because it is plus 0 0 k so this k is added only to the third component what is the dot product of these two vectors now do you see these two vectors first into this plus second into this and third quantity will multiply 0 so only the first two components are going to come into the picture what are they so this implies that it is dabba u by dabba x into dabba k by dabba y plus not a plus there is a minus sign here minus dabba u by dabba y into dabba k by dabba x correct which is equal to what which is equal to zero and this looks like what this looks like dabba u by dabba x and dabba k by dabba y minus dabba u by dabba y into dabba k by dabba x equal to 0 determinant of this but who is this this is the jacobian of uv with respect to x y and that is equal to 0 right so the jacobian of u v with respect to x y is equal to 0 and therefore by the theorem mentioned above whose proof i have not given in this in this particular lecture what can you say that u and 
V are functionally dependent. Okay. I will solve some problems on functional dependency of two functions. Okay. In some different lecture. So we are directly using that result because the Jacobian is zero. We can say that u and v, not v, sorry, u and sorry, u and k, u and k are functionally dependent. Sorry for this. Okay, and uh, therefore this means k and u are depending on each other. So what we will say is that suppose k is a function of u. You can even take u as a function of k or k as a function of u. Anyways, you can take it here. So suppose k is a function of u, say. Okay, this means that k is the function of u. Now here, you have to be very careful by saying because here you are writing the depend independency or the dependency of u and k is with respect to which variables it is only with respect to the variables x and y but u and k were the functions of x y and z so here k is a function of u as well as i should not forget that z is also in the picture the question of x and y is resolved over here Okay, so who is left? The Z variable we are still not paying attention at. Therefore, equation star becomes, remember you, we had written an equation star above, equation star becomes, what was that equation? Let me just write it again here. The equation star was du plus k dz is equal to how much? Zero, this was equation star. Therefore, this equation now can becomes what? du plus k which is a function of u and z dz is equal to zero okay now this differential equation can be solved i mean to say that which differential equation du by dz plus k which is a function of u and z equal to zero can be solved So after solving this differential equation, what will you get? You will get a solution. So we get a solution of the form. The solution must be of what form? It is of the form some function of phi, some function phi, which is depending on uz and that is equal to how much? That is some arbitrary constant. But I know that this u depends on what? This u depends on x, y, and z. Okay, so when I substitute that u as, as a function of x, y, z, I will get a function of x, y, and z. That function I will call as u, x, y, z, and that will be some different constant. This u is nothing but our required integral, where u is this little u is the integral of the given Puffian differential equation p dx plus q dy plus r dz equal to zero okay so this means that the Puffian differential equation p dx plus q dy plus r dz has an integral and therefore the Puffian differential equation which is given to us is integrable. So this finishes the proof of this theorem. When we solve problems on this, the entire idea of this theorem will be clear. All the problems we will try to solve using this particular method.